Hi gang, Scott Davenport here and welcome to Impost. Thanks for joining me today. Well, today is a live edit, live in air quotes. I'm not live streaming, but what I am doing is taking a photo out of my library, turning on record and starting a processing session. So uh, from start to finish, it'll just be stream of consciousness. And the, the photo I'm gonna use here, I, I did process this previously as a black and white photo. If you saw in the field earlier this week, you would have seen this you know, flashed on the screen for a few seconds as a black and white photo. This, uh, this scene here from Schooner Head. But because of the way these, uh, it's just like this soft palette of colors are here, I wanted to give this a try as a color photo. And so that's what I'm gonna to do today. So let's get right into it. Looking at this photo, you know, quick image assessment. I need to do a little bit with the crop. Um, this, this little bit of rock at the edge there, it's a little distracting, but the corners are, are kind of, you know, just a little bit messy, especially this bright rock here. I'm not sure if I'll be able to crop all of that away. Uh, but after that, I really want to take this in kind of a, a warm, cool direction, but less so on the warm side, more on the cool side. I really like the just the soft blues that are going on in here, uh, keeping these rocks very dark so that it will naturally lead the eye into the frame. But then perhaps just a tiny touch of warmth on what these are, these orange type colors are, and maybe add a little bit of of uh, you know action into the the tree line here, so uh, let's let's get into it here. Let me hit the R key. We'll start with a little bit of crop. I think I'll just tug this in from the side, so I'm taking care of eliminating that. But I don't want to go up much higher. If um if I take this up to here, now nah, it's not that's no good. I don't want to crowd that particular rock on the side there. So we'll take that as good. And while I'm in here, let's let's rotate this so it's it's basically flat and I'm kind of using this bit of shore as my guideline. I suppose we could do a quick angle check on this. Ah, pretty close. Okay, we'll call that good. Let's hit done on the crop. And I want to straight away deal with this, uh, this bit of rock here. So Q key for the retouch. Let's find out where that's sampled from. That's not bad, but, uh, we can make that better there. And what if I reduce the feather some? That's looking a little better. And perhaps, you know what? I think I'll leave it at that and I'll do uh, a little bit of dodging and burning. It'll be a vignette at the end that'll get darker and hide. Let's check the other corner. So holding down the space bar, panning over. And, hmm, this one's a little tougher because of this, this jaggedness here. Let's try, let me just try really quickly downplaying that. Okay, we've got darken. I'll turn off auto mask. I want pretty heavy, heavy flow and density on this. And just see what really darkening this is gonna do for us. Let's pull that really far down. Just to see how far I can downplay that. All right, I'll be able to downplay that plenty. So I won't take that right now. I won't make that change right now. But just, I know that I can deal with that corner toward the end and not have to worry about it. Oh, I forgot to check for dust spots really quickly. This was a pretty clean sensor. Looks pretty nice out there. I don't see anything obvious. Something out in the horizon here. Let's take a look at that. Let's, uh, let's say what, Q. Let's zoom into this area. And yeah, there's some like a little buoy or something out there. So we'll take care of, that might even just be a, might just be a white cap. Okay, great. All right, basic processing time. Double check lens corrections are on. They are. Basics were exposed pretty well. This was a 20 second exposure. That's the nice soft drag on the water. And let's begin with uh, a quick look through some of the profiles. So landscape, actually landscape is nice. The colors are a little, little richer. Uh, let me check vivid. I expect to be, yeah, vivid. It's actually a little dingy for this scene. Modern. I don't know why I have that in there. That must've been for a different project. Uh, let's go back to landscape. I like that. White balance. Let's find a nice neutral gray out in these rocks here. And if you've seen me do this before, you know that I'm looking for values that are really, really close together. That's pretty darn good right there. That got even a little bluer. And let me check that before and after as shot. Undo to go after. Oh, didn't like my undo. We'll go to the custom. 
Custom feels a, a little too blue. Let me check that again here. As shot. As shot's 5600, so nearly daylight. Or cloudy, rather. No, no, it's daylight. Uh, and custom, 5400. Wow, they are close, aren't they? Well, I'll tell you what. We'll split the difference. We'll go daylight. And call it good. I'm not going to spend too much more time on it. Uh, let's move on to the overall basics here. I mentioned the exposure itself looks good. I want to get a black point here. I want to get this nice deep black in there. So nudge that down ever so slightly. A couple of specs down at the bottom. Great. Um, I'm going to open shadows for a second just to see what gets affected. Okay, so the foreground rocks for sure, but also the, uh, the hillside. I do not want to open shadows globally. I like the dark foreground, so I'll do something later on with the mid slash background. Same thing for highlights. Just want to play with the slider right now. There's not a whole lot happening up in that sky. Um, but if I open up highlights a touch, yeah, I'll, I'll take that. And contrast, I certainly want to start working that. That's going to make those, those rocks nice and dark. And again, I will open up shadows a bit in the midground. Let's do a quick before and after check, see how where we've, we've come so far. <laughs> this is what happens when you make a virtual copy. So it's going all the way back to my, uh, let me see here. Let me check my history. That's exactly what it's doing. Okay, that's, that's not helpful. I can check my reset settings. I can jump back to that point to see my before and after. So this was before, it's still not doing that. You guys, Lightroom, you're killing me here. You're just killing me here. All right, so we're going to have to go on faith that I'm doing things right. So uh, I've learned something already. If you do a virtual copy, that becomes your base of history. Um, I don't work with the history panel that often. If someone knows there's a way to like reset history, drop a comment below. I'd like to learn how to do that. All right, um, back to the processing. So um, next, let's nudge clarity. Uh, 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 we're going to try this. And... Yeah, it's doing, it's doing what I, I was not wanting it to do, which is introducing clarity into the ocean there. If I turn that off and pop that back up. So what we'll do instead with clarity will be with a gradient. We'll go to that in a moment. Let's do a touch of vibrance. And in HSL, I want to do something with the foliage. So first, just to skim, we got green, we got yellow. And so I'm hovering over the tree line, but I'm also watching the highlighted color channel in the HSL panel. Okay, so what we expected, greens and yellows. Let's saturate those a little bit. And I mean a little, I don't want to oversaturate. And for the greens, let's open up the luminance. Let me push it really far to see what, what changes. Okay, the, the place that's changing the most is this patch of grass here. So I, I don't want that to happen. Uh, let's push the yellows back and forth. The yellow brightening is nice. Let's do that. And I can also do what here? Let's, let's push, push yellow and green a little bit there. Okay. All right. Um, let's see now. Next... We'll go to deal with the clarity, where I want clarity on everything except the sky, because there's no detail, and the water. I want to keep that soft. We'll do that with a gradient. And so the gradient, let's collapse that down so we're not confused by what we're working on. Uh, I want clarity. There's clarity, and that's negative clarity. Let's push that up. And I will just drag up here. So now this clarity is affecting nearly the entire scene, right? So that's great. And what we will do next is use our range masks. So I'll use luminance, show the luminance mask, and start adjusting the sliders so that I'm only affecting the, the darker tones. So we'll take away the highlights. That'll make the sky go away. And we'll start to see the ocean get, you know, not touched. Now this part here, uh, that will need some cleanup. And I'll need to use a brush for that. And that's all right. Let's not play with the smoothness and see about keeping some of that. So smoother as like actually going coarser. We're keeping that clarity in the shadowy areas. And this area, I'm just going to have to paint out. So we'll get the brush, erase, auto mask is set. And just kind of sweep this through. 
this area here. And let's be complete and we'll go through the midground for the ocean. You may be wondering, you know, could you have done this in the first place, Scott, with just a uh, with just a brush? Yeah, probably. Um, but this is the route that I chose to go, and and you know, honestly, I, I like using the range masks because it does just give subtle differences in how whatever adjustments getting applied. In this case, it's clarity, but for saturation, for anything else there is you know, more being applied to certain parts of the range and less being applied. This is not a um, just solid red mask. This is very nuanced. All right, let's turn off the luminance mask and see what our results are. And let's play with clarity again. So now we're, now we're pushing this around. We're just going to see the changes on the land, right? And so let's try, I think I had it jacked up to over 20. That was a little bit harsh. 16... Let's do a before and after on just the clarity. Before and after. Nice. All right, I like that. Um, hmm, what else do we want to do here? So I, I want to take some of the blue out of the rocks in the foreground. Uh, I like the blue in the water, and I'm sure that there's a blue cast here because there's a lot of blue flying around this scene. You know, if you saw the in the field video, you know there was just a lot of cloud cover. It did have a blue tint to it, although that didn't come through in this particular sky. Let's try a new gradient. I'll drag this upward here, and I, I'm going to use the same uh, luminance mask. Turn on the luminance mask so I can see it. Nudge away. No, you know what? This one's going to be simpler just to do a straight up brushing job. So we'll just make that like this. Don't need a range mask. I do need the brush. Erase. Uh, let me turn on my overlay so I can see it. And now I'll just work through removing. So right now I'm just creating the mask. I haven't really made any any slider changes. And it looks like I've got to get a little tighter on my feather for that. That was a mistake. Uh, incidentally, I'm, I'm holding down the option key to switch between the paint in and paint out modes or the erase versus brush modes here. Sweep around there. Okay, and you know what? I think for the center part, I'll leave the bluish cast on those rocks, at least for now. So we'll just do the important cleanup here, here, a couple of clicks in that area. This is the this is the boring part where it's just me getting through all this stuff. And Lightroom is starting to to slow down on me already. Let's turn off our auto mask now so it doesn't have to keep sampling. There we go. And now I can just sweep through here with a little bit more speed. Okay, like that. Did we get it all? I think so. Still waiting. Come on, Lightroom. You can do it. I have faith in you. All right. Let's turn that off. And now to reduce the blue cast, I'm just going to introduce some warmth. That's the options that I have here. So that's nice. Just that little tiny touch. So that was a lot of that was a lot of stuff, right? Um, but let me now the, the 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 way we can do a before and after. Let me just push that temperature up a little higher. So looking at the foreground rocks, right? We just added a bit of temperature there. Let me turn off that temperature by resetting it. Look at the foreground rocks. See how they're kind of dull and blue. And then I'll undo that. So we're adding that temperature back in, and it's a little bit warmer. And now I'll dial that back to just be a little more subtle, you know, in the, I think, five, six, seven range there. That's pretty nice. I like that. Um, let's see what else to do here. I think next will be to so the sky. What's going on with the sky here? It's got this just basically vacant white to it. Let's see about adding some blue temperature into that. Again, you know, doing a blue cast kind of thing. We'll go to a new gradient, pull that down this way, 
make sure I'm covering all of the sky. And this I will use a range mask for because I believe this will be very quickly and easily done with a range mask because I don't need the shadow areas. And there we go. We've got, we've got our mask. I'm not going to worry about the windows. I will do the diligence of a quick brush stroke through the hills just so that I'm taking out any of that extra bits I'm, I'm painting in. Scott, you need to erase. That, was, that would explain why I wasn't seeing anything change. Nature of a live edit. Mistakes get made. There we go. Just to take any of that little bits that might be floating around in that, uh, that tree line. And now let's see. We nudge temperature. Let me push it really far. Okay, that's better, but you know, certainly too blue. And we'll take that to maybe, uh, maybe there. And I do want to go on a race again on this house. This house was getting some extra blue cast. I don't want that. So we'll call that good. Um, I also do not need the clarity pop. There's no clarity to be had up there. Final revisit on the temperature slider. Waiting for Lightroom. All right, did all of that add up to anything? You know, it, it kind of didn't really seem to matter too much, but uh, I'll, I'll take it at this point. I'll just leave it in place. Certainly didn't harm anything. Uh, anything else that I want to do here? Um, let's, let's add some additional detail. Actually, let's do detail through detail. How about that? Open up detail. We'll grab our masking slider. I'm holding the option or alt key on windows so that I can see where we'll add detail. So anywhere that's black will not get the edge detail. That's great. And then we'll pop sharpening details a little bit. We can take a look at what that looks like on the rock. Matt did not take. Let's try that again right here. There we go. Yeah, that looks nice. All right, um, last step I think will be um, a version of a vignette. So uh, I don't want to have the vignette on the top corners. I only want it to be on the bottom half of the scene. This vignette in these bright parts of the sky, that would just look awkward. So we'll use a radial filter. Let's load in a burn style or preset or effect, whatever it is that Lightroom calls it. Each tool has their own names for things. I just make this nice and wide. There we go. Position this down here. And so right now, let's get that roughly centered. Right now we're decreasing exposure and that is outside of this, uh, this frame. So if I were to turn off You'll see that the outsides brighten up. Okay, that's great. We just don't want it on the top half of the screen. So let's turn on the selected overlay. Let's see where we have this being adjusted, or I said affected is the word I was looking for. We'll stretch this out even further. Reposition. Curve this downward even more. So really, really just just getting like you know this uh, like this bowl shaped bottom to the to the photo and it's a little tiny touch on the edges we can back that off with adjusting the feather a little bit maybe around there and lastly taking a brush with an eraser do not need the auto mask nice big brush and just run it all through the top of the scene so we're removing this reduction of exposure so this you know this burn look from the upper half and that's giving us you know a bottom half vignette so that that cradle is a little bit darker on the bottom part of the scene it's reinforcing the fact that we've got some nice dark rocks out there leading me up into into the scene overall um, what remains uh, I still kind of don't like the look of that rock down in the lower left corner and um, the repair job in Lightroom would be pretty difficult to do. Lightroom's not 
the best suited tool for that kind of retouching. So I'm gonna throw this over into On One Photo, use the perfect eraser, and then I'll play around maybe adding a bit of a glow to the, or like a, like a forest, you know, pop or something like that to the trees that are on the, uh, on that hunk of rock over there. So let's go ahead and say done on this, right click on it and do an edit in effects 2019, and I'll see you on the other side. All right, in the effects module in On One Photo Raw, I hit the Q key, got my perfect eraser, and let's go to work on this uh, this rock formation here. I'm just gonna kind of make a biggerish brush stroke around here and see if I coach it to kind of almost fill in that bit of rock, how will it reassemble that for me? Better. Um, what I will do now is let's zoom in on that area. And that made, it took a lot of those interesting barnacles there. Let's use fix clone tool and take a, uh, a sample point and start to fill this in myself. I think that'll work a little better. I'll fill some of that in. Uh, let me get another good sample point. I want to get a little, actually I'll, I'll end up dodging and burning or accenting that vignette if I have to. Go ahead and fade this in. Something like that. And if you're uh, you're curious about this type of work, I did a course with On One on their retouching tools. It's on their website. I think it's 25 bucks. And it will go through all the different tools they have, how to use them, how to get the, the best looking blends and so forth. And let's add some little more texture in there. So it's starting to look a little bit, a little bit too false for my tastes. I'll see about finishing that off, filling that in, but then maybe bringing some of this other rock into the mix as well. And then let's blend that together. It's, um, yeah. Now those last two strokes I do not like. Undo that stuff. Let me back off a few retouches. So I'm just doing undos for a few of these here. And instead, go back to the perfect eraser and see if it can work its own magic there and do a little more content aware filling of this area. That is not good. We'll undo that. That happens sometimes. Okay, one more, one more shot at this. And uh, let's sample here, get my opacity back up, and maybe about there, fill that in. All right, that's starting to look a little better. I think my last my last bit is going to be to downplay some of that repeated crisscrossing that happened there and just use a little bit of that fill in. So now if I zoom back all the way out here, you know, that's um that's not particularly noticeable. We'll use a local and do a bit of brushing on that. Okay, I got my brush tool. Great. Nice, nice soft feather on that, just to kind of downplay that even further so that it's not uh, not really catching the eye. But to me, that's, that's a little less distracting than before. I'll have to compare them. Maybe, uh, maybe I'll end up tossing it. Uh, last bit, since I'm in effect, I wanted to try out a little bit of foliage enhancement. So color adjustment, foliage. I'm just watching the pop here. And that should be off and on with a not much change at all. And I like I like that. Um, that's that's kind of nice. Although I think I'll back off the the yellow shift to green and keep some of those yellows in there. Even pop them up a little bit more. And let's take a look at oranges. Since there's a tiny bit of orange out there, let's go ahead and pop that up. Tiny things. Uh, and of course, since I'm in here already as well. Let's take a look at dynamic contrast. We're doing a before and after on that. And I'm gonna leverage the, uh, the quick mask AI so that I can drop the various colors like these things here. I don't need that stuff. I don't need that stuff. I will keep all of these areas, these areas, and these areas, 
and then let the mask go to work. That's pretty close. Let's go ahead and we'll add in a little more for that house. Great. Call that good. We'll say done in the mask. That'll generate and I'll have a nice, uh, nice extra contrast pop to those hard parts of the land. Great. With that, I think I'll call this one done. Send it on back to Lightroom. And uh, the photo is complete. I think I'm going to call this one finished. And uh, yeah, I, um, I guess I like the, the black and white treatment as compared to the color treatment. They are, they're, they're different and I like them each for their own reasons. For, uh, for you know, what did I learn from this process? I think the, uh, the thing about the, the virtual copy and the, the uh, history resetting to whatever the virtual copy was when you made it, that was, um, that was a surprise to me. I didn't realize that's how Lightroom was doing things under the cover. Shows you how often um, I go back into uh, the history panels. But uh, yeah, that's, um, that's going to do it for the live edit. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you uh, picked up a tip or two that you can use on your photos. And as always, if you've got questions about photography, drop them in the comments below. Feel free to hit me up through my website. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport and happy shooting.